Hi, I'm Travis Morche. I'm the nursery stock manager here at Colonial Gardens out in Blue Springs. I'm Will DeLacy. I'm the orchard manager of the Colonial Farms Department. And we're here today because we want to talk to you about the proper pruning of your newly purchased uh, packaged fruit tree. First thing that we want to make sure that we have is a good set of uh, pruners. I typically carry the Felcos myself. I really like the way that they uh, the way that they have performed for me. You can get replacement parts for them. They're easy to clean, very easy to maintain. Uh, Will, typically what do you use, sir? I usually use the Felcos as well. And we've got the Felco file here to sharpen them down. And then some of their 980 spray, which keeps them nice and oiled up. One of the most important things that you can have whenever you start pruning your fruit trees is a cup of disinfectant along with your newly sharpened uh, pruners. I like to have a cup of disinfectant so we can do what I call the dip, cut, and dip method. That when you go through and uh, before you do your cuts, disinfect your pruners. After you make a cut, disinfect them again. This helps uh, stop the spread of pathogens and funguses whenever you do your cuts. Uh, this right here is uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, Will, what are the other types of disinfectants that homeowners can use to disinfect their pruners? There's a whole bunch of different things you can use. There's um, hydrogen peroxide, Sanidate 2.0, which is basically hydrogen peroxide. Um, a white bleach solution works. Pretty much anything that'll kill the pathogen. Now with uh, bleach, I like to personally, I go with a one to 10 or one to nine ratio. Do yep. one part bleach to nine to 10 parts water. That typically will kill just about any pathogen that is really out there. Oh yeah. All right, fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and we will get started. All right, when I get started pruning a fruit tree, the first thing that I really like to do is to locate any diseased or damaged or broken branches. These are gonna be the first thing that you wanna remove. These are definitely are already uh, branches that are gonna be of no beneficial use to the tree. So we wanna go ahead and we wanna start off by getting those removed. And then we will, uh, at that point, we will transition over and we'll start worrying about some of the crossing branches and the upright growing branches. So Will, if you wanna go ahead and uh, get started here, we can go ahead and uh, get going removing these. What else do you like to look for whenever you are pruning a fruit tree? So the first thing I'm looking at when I walk up to a, a, a tree that hasn't been pruned yet is just anything broken. So Travis has taken off those dead disease branches. And once we get all the broken branches taken care of, then we immediately start looking for what's diseased, what's rotting. And here on this specific tree, we've got a bunch of these little twigs and, and newly formed growth from last year that, that seem to be rotting off. And so what we're gonna do is we're just not even gonna take a chance with those and we're gonna chop them off before they can do anything to the plant. Now when you start doing a prune for a pr particular any particular fruit tree, you wanna see where it's coming away from your main uh, branch here. Go just above the collar, that's right where it attaches to the tree and do a nice clean cut right there, slightly above so you can have a nice scar that'll form right there and keep the amount of bugs or pathogens from getting into the fruit tree at that entry point. So now that we've pruned out all the diseased material and all the broken branches, it's time to start looking at the tree. And um, the next step is trimming out all of the shoots growing in the middle and any, any twigs, anything growing towards the middle of the tree. When it comes to fruit trees, especially peaches, sunlight is super important. And the, the more sunlight you get into the middle of that camp, canopy, the better off you're gonna be. All right, so at this point now, what we have done is we have started to establish what we call our scaffold branches. These are gonna be our main fruit producers and fruit bearing uh, branches of the tree. Uh, what we wanna do at this point is make sure that if we have anything that's really, really long, what we wanna call our red canes. These are our branches that have formed last year. All of these little buds right here are all going to be fruit at some point. So what we want to do, what I like to do with these is take these back by about a third. Any one that grows out and down, we want to go ahead and remove. If it grows straight up, we want to go ahead and remove that as well. And then these other side ones, we'll take those back by a good solid third, because if we start having fruit that forms up here on the tips of these branches, it's gonna get heavy enough. It's gonna draw down this branch and actually create so much weight that this will break. And not only when it breaks, does it damage that branch, that branch is dead, 
but it's going to pull that bark off the, along the whole strip of this branch right here, and we do not want that. So we want to go through and tip these back, and that is going to limit the amount of fruit that's going to form on this. But when I say limit, it's not going to inhibit the actual full bore production of this tree. It's going to make it to where this tree will be a better producing tree because we have thinned it out a little bit. Now, one thing I really do like about shaping my fruit trees is planning for the future. So going through at this point right here, I don't want this branch to continually grow up this way here. I want to actually start getting this scaffold branch to start growing outwards like this. So what you want to do is find an outlying bud that's facing out towards the direction that you want to that want the tree to grow in. And we'll just go through and prune it right at that point. And as this tree starts to flush, this tree will actually start growing in that direction. So going through and doing a little bit of manipulation on your fruit tree, a little bit of forward thinking for what you're going to want to see in the future is definitely at this point of the pruning process, this is definitely really what you want to do. Especially on a young tree like this. All right, now at this point here, we've got a really nice uh, balancing act going on with our tree here, but we need to do this uh, central leader right here. We want to go ahead and actually remove this. We're going to take this down a bit to uh, form up this tree and make it to where it's nice and balanced and it's not gonna be so, quite so lopsided. Now this is gonna make some people cringe, but trust me when I say that it will make this tree produce all the, all the better in the later years. And there you have it. This is a uh, perfectly done, uh, well-pruned, young, plant-right packaged Alberta peach tree. We're gonna go ahead and we'll move on to doing one of our apple trees and uh, show you what we like to do to get started with those and how we like to prune those and make sure that they're gonna be the best producing trees as possible. Now with the polar vortex that we have had coming through Kansas City, definitely is not the correct time to do pruning. Uh, very typically though, I do recommend uh, getting your fruit trees pruned by about uh, Valentine's Day is typically whenever I like to have my fruit trees done. Will, what do you typically like to do with our orchard? same thing that you do you know anything anything past the coldest part of the year and you know the coldest part of the year is right now so um, i'm waiting for that to pass and then as soon as it passes when the temperatures get back up in the 30s and 40s we'll be all clear and it'll be ready to prune all right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started here pruning on this uh, red fuji apple we're not going to get quite as deep into the pruning with this as we did with the peach tree because we want to be a little bit more judicious with the pruning of apple trees. Now with apple trees, I, whenever I start pruning, I like to start from the top and work my way down. Now if you look at this particular tree right here, there's got several uh, several dominating leaders, several, several central leaders that are coming up here. We want to go ahead and we want to establish one single leader here. I've got a little bit of a broken branch right here this one was pruned off the year before last, and you can see it kind of has a little bit of a dog leg there and it didn't really heal right. So I'm actually gonna take both of these leaders off. Since this leader back here looks like to be a really good strong one, I wanna go ahead and I wanna remove that one right there. What we're gonna do next is to go through and do a bunch of our heading cuts. That's gonna take this tree canopy back a little bit get some of this long, long growth that's out here and really shore this tree up. And then we'll go ahead and thin out all of our inward growing branches, any crossing branches, just to make sure that this tree has good airflow and gets a lot of sunlight in here as, as fruit starts to form. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done as well. All right, now we've gone through and we have finished up the pruning on this apple tree right here. This nice young tree is now ready to be put out and be placed in your garden or out in your urban orchard to uh, get started and will be a fruitful tree here in about the next three years. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to do another pruning video uh, after the polar vortex has come through Kansas City out in our orchard and show you what it's like to do pruning, a maintenance pruning on an established fruit tree that's been in the ground for three years. So what we're gonna show you literally is gonna be a tree that was this size and three years from now, we're gonna show you what it's going to be like to do a prune, a maintenance pruning on a tree like that. All right, I uh, wanna thank you for watching our video. We are actually going to do a fruit tree pre-book. If you're interested on getting, uh, getting started on getting your fruit trees in a little early this year, or if you just wanna make sure that you don't miss out on the availabilities of what we do have coming in, 
You can call us here at Colonial Gardens or you can reach out to us on our webpage. We'll be more than happy to uh, let you know what we have in stock and what we have coming in, pricing for them. Once again, I am Travis. And I'm Will. We thank you for watching and we can't wait to see you out here again at Colonial Gardens and Colonial Farms very soon. Take care.